to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. <laughs> I was I was asked this question uh, the other day, and I just it, it really made me just consider honestly how much I appreciate you guys. But I was asked the question: who who are my mentors? Who are the people? that are older than me. And I tried to remember your quote. I can never remember your quote, Michael, but I love it. <laughs> and I, and I said, I said something to the effect of, I said, age is an opportunity for wisdom, but not an indication of it. That's it. Okay, good. I don't say indication, but, but like, that's it. Yeah. That's the gist. And, and so I, I said through, through the early years of my ministry, I, I asked a lot of different pastors to mentor me. I asked mm -hmm. a lot of different pastors to disciple me and to a man, every single one of them said no, every single one. Of what? Them. I didn't know that. Every single one of them said no. Yeah. Wow. Why? Every, I, I don't know. Every single one of them told me no. And, and, I, but I was, I was trying to answer this question because they were, what they were getting at is who tempers me and what I believe. And I said, I said, Micah and Pierce and I are such different people that we temper each other. We, mm -hmm. we've been having these conversations for Micah and I 21 years, Pierce now almost 11, mm -hmm. uh, as, as part of the church, you yeah. know? And, and I was like, we've, we have these conversations all the time and we don't always agree, but we always agree that the Bible has to be the standard and the yeah. foundation. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so long as we have people like this in our lives where we can go, look, this, this standard has to be the scripture. Yeah. Um, I think you here's my take on the older to, thing. Yeah. I actually think it's a great idea with a caveat that I think the system that Paul was talking about was that there was a level of maturity, a spiritual maturity sure. that allowed you as an older person to invest into a younger person. Sure. So that's why I say age is an opportunity for sure. wisdom, but doesn't imply it. Mm -hmm. I think that, that just because someone's older doesn't mean that they're a fit to be someone that can invest into you. Sure. Well, uh, yeah. doesn't mean there's not things to learn from them. Right. I, I do think it's a good idea. There are old to people have, who are not wise. Right. I do think it's a good idea to have older people for us as pastors in ministry that we can, that we can like reference and call sure. and like ask questions to. I think where my struggle is, is the pattern that Paul set up with the older teach the younger in that regards, it seems to imply a sense of spiritual maturity. Right. I also, another issue I have, which people do not like this is if that's true, we don't need seminaries. Mm. Right. So you kind of got to pick. Yeah. If this is a, has to be every situation. Every pastor, person in ministry has to be mentored by someone older. Then you have to say, what's the point of seminaries? Yeah. Right. So if you're like, we have to have seminaries or someone that's a pastor has to have a seminary degree, then you actually can't tell them. You also have to have an older mentor yeah. because it can't be both ways. Flesh that out more. Um, the idea of a seminary is, I think is because that system that Paul has set up broke down. Oh, okay. Paul tells Timothy, the things you heard me say and trust the faithful men who are also able to teach. So he's mm. setting up a system where like I see. an older person or another person who's in a pastoral leadership or in a position of an overseer well, invests into other people, teaches them to do the same it, role. Interestingly enough, uh, first Timothy four 12, don't let them look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers yeah. in life, faith, love, speech, and purity folded back on first Timothy oh, two, yeah, yeah. where he says the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people. In the case of Timothy, Timothy was the younger man teaching the older men. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So the, yeah. Okay. Fair. So at least the point is that there's someone. Uh, the, the point is that there's someone who is mature in their faith. Investing in someone it, who's younger in their faith. Investing in someone who's younger in their faith. Yes. And that probably should be more of the focus hundred percent than the age. hundred um, percent. I think it's fleshing it out a little farther with what I was saying. My point is if someone's like you as a pastor, you right. have to have an older person who's yeah. mentoring you. Then I would say that you would have to say that you, um, say that there's no need for seminaries then. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and at what point, like, what do you do when you're 70? Yeah. You know, you better right? find somebody. <laughs> so, yeah. Like these, <laughs> yeah. Like, the world. Yeah. Like well, I, and I've <laughs> met, I've met people, um, who've gotten saved, like, in yeah. their sixties and seventies and eighties. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. And does you do by nature of age, you say, all right, well, all right, you now start me. teaching these. No, other yeah, 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 yeah. Of course not. Well, I, I've really enjoyed getting to know Sean Mullen. Mm -hmm. uh, 
He's he, been a massive encouragement, man. Dude, he is so sinking cool, and mm -hmm. he and he he has done a, some seminary education. He's Are you just talking about him because he's older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, but, but <laughs> he's got a great mustache. <laughs> he does, man. My my boys love his accent. Yeah, my dude, boys love it. Is it is an awesome accent. I mean, it, I, I can sit. And, I love that. That's accent. true. If it's you're great. gonna cast a guy who's wise, you would get a guy like he's yeah, he's fit. He's got a mustache. He's got a cool accent. He's older. He can yeah. build houses. <laughs> For right, Ryan, like, it would probably be Alistair Begg, though. True, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. Anybody like <laughs> with a Scottish accent, <laughs> right? Because because they would sit down with me. And the, say, the man in the middle said I could come. <laughs> they, they, they'd sit down with me and they'd say, Ryan, I, have you? <laughs> Do you love Christ today? <laughs> do you do you love Christ? You, 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 don't, you don't think the, the accent would be a distraction for you? Would you just be like you just succumb to anything uh, they say? You're like whatever right. you say goes. No, but no, I, I didn't mention Sean just because he's older. But one of the things that's been really fun for me is because because he's he's very smart, very well educated. We can slip into we became friends very quickly, and we're able to talk about Bible very quickly because. He has this immense foundation in the scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we trade shots, not in a bad way, but like no. sharpening yeah, yeah. one yeah. another uh, and shaping one another. And it's and there have been a couple of things that in the last few months that I've learned from him that I'm just like, crap, man, I've never considered that. Yeah. And vice versa. And yeah, so mm -hmm. it, it's not even a mentorship, menteeship. It's just friends. We're yeah. friends. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, to close all that out, I am a fan of the system that Paul set up with Timothy. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I think that is important and that pastors slash overseers should participate in that pattern. The things you've heard me mm. teach and trust the faithful men who are also able to teach. Like, I think that's one of the yeah. big breakdowns you see in a lot of churches is the pastors don't invest into other men who can step in and do Dude, that role. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really quick side note here. I, I was thinking about so Tuesday Bible study got kicked off again through the summer. We did Thursday night Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study is growing. I'm having lunch with two or three people a week. I'm getting daily text questions, Bible questions, and I'm loving it. I, I love any chance I have. I'm a teacher, man. I want to teach. Let me teach, you know? And so like I had a couple of people this past week apologize to me. like, man, sorry, I took up so much of your time. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is my favorite thing to do. And I had a thought that I've never had before. We've talked about it before, but not from this vantage point. Uh, I, uh, there was a pastor that I know I saw on Facebook a couple of months ago. I mentioned it to you, I think Micah, and he said some, maybe to you as well, Pierce, but he mentioned something like I have 18 regular meetings a month and I'm just adding three more Ugh. to that schedule. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. And I thought, yuck. Well, you know? unless it's like coffee and lunch. It's not. <laughs> disc golf it's, and... it's administrative type meetings, right? Mm. And I just thought, yuck, that's disgusting to me. And it made me think of Acts 6, where it's not right for us to wait on tables, to give up the yeah. preaching and the teaching of the Word of God, to wait on tables. And I begin to wonder how many teaching pastors, how many teaching pastors, their teaching is limited to what they do in the pulpit. And then the rest mm. of their time is filled mm. up with administrative duties. That's for good sure, time. yeah. Because that's just the role that we've conscribed pastors too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And now you've got to do all these other hundred things to prove your worth. Yeah. A instead of mm. just being able to teach yeah. and, and to have more opportunities to teach. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. because I'm, there's I'm, a lot to unpack in that. Yeah. I, I am constantly right now. I'm just, I've started making videos with Colin, mm -hmm. <laughs> Colin. I was telling Colin the other day about something else I wanted to do. And he goes, okay, we need to make one video a day for the next year so we can accomplish <laughs> that. <laughs> and so like, we got to figure out how to monetize those videos for you guys. So Colin can like get paid. For <laughs> yes. We seriously talked about it. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're wanting to do, we're wanting to do a daily Bible reading Oh, cool. Re recap, not the Bible recap, because we won't go through the whole scripture, right. but the theme of Jesus through the whole Bible. So oh, that people cool. in the course of a year will have a better understanding of the theme of the gospel uh, with, with a seven minute video and a two minute video. So we could use it as a reel and we could use it oh, okay. as a other thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to start talking to people about sponsoring a video it's a great idea. for a hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. And that will pay for our equipment that we need and our time. Cause it'll yeah, take yeah. a lot of time. Uh, and but Colin's so good at that. He is he, stinking like, good at it, Like, that's not very much money for Colin. And, and what's amazing about it is, like, I was telling him, I'm going to type this up for the blog that I want to start. And because Asher has been asking about how to read the Bible. And I'm like, mm -hmm. look, buddy, you don't really need Leviticus right now. You don't really, like, I, I don't think, I don't think a lot of people need Leviticus, really, like, to understand <laughs> the story of Jesus. I just don't. We mm -hmm. can fight about that later if y'all want. But, but uh, Colin goes, why are you doing it just for your son? <laughs> he was like... He goes, this, he goes, man. And, yeah. and if you do a blog, he goes, that's great. A few people that follow you and know you will read it. He goes, but dude, this has the potential to be a blessing to so many people. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And so we had lunch about it the other day, it tried to get you to come and join us, but you weren't able to, cause mm -hmm. you were busy. But, uh, anyway, just, 
I right now I just I want to teach. I want. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, that's why we try to protect that role I know, for you, you at the I, church. Yeah. I think that's what's made me think about that more, and I well, really I, appreciate that. I think there's if there are people coming to the four fifty six right now that have the perspective that like the role of a pastor is to sit in the office and make sure that he's available. <laughs> um, they're probably not going to want to stay for very long because yeah. that's not how we're going to be. No, that's no. not how like your value Thank for you. us as a church <laughs> is the fact that you are a teacher and that you mm -hmm. invest into people in that way. And if we can't protect that time for you to be able to do that, then it's, the, it's not the greatest value for us as a church. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You sitting in an office all day, which to be fair, would be people coming by the office to do the same thing. But like, <laughs> yeah. it makes yeah. it makes a bigger impact when you're with people doing life with people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I, anyways, I we're gonna protect that because that's it's the most it. valuable thing you have for us as a church. Absolutely. People people ask me every now and then like questions about the building or questions about the youth. I'm like, you, you don't understand. Micah and Pierce don't let me do anything but teach. <laughs> I was I'm like, stuck in my corner. Let me be in my corner. <laughs> I was like, That's, this is this is what I do. Over well, they're here. just like, yeah, yeah. they're just used to yeah. they're just used to the teaching pastor being the senior pastor being the yeah. one person who makes all the decisions. And I know I tell them that you're the one that's in charge, Micah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not in charge. Micah, Micah's in charge. I just do what I'm, I'm told. Not in charge. <laughs> Definitely not in charge. Well, let's take a hard right turn into the PCC, everybody. <laughs> Come on over to Pierce's Culture Corner. Uh, so to to uh, to emphasize at the very beginning of this PCC, I tried to to do my due diligence and get as much information as possible concerning what a video I had seen on Instagram. So I wanted to do more research about it. Um, but everything that I could find was, it was a bunch of different sites. They were still citing information from one meeting. So um, what we're going to be talking about is the 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 reel that I saw talked about how the Chinese Communist Party is rewriting the Bible. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What? So, yeah. So this, the, all of the quotes and all of the information comes from one, from Mike Gallagher, um, who is a, uh, he's a Republican representative, and he was at the gathering of the Parliament of the World, of, of the world's religions. That's what it was. That's so all of this information is quoted <laughs> from that, the gathering of the Parliament of the World religion. So uh, the two, the two texts that they point to, they didn't really have anything exactly quoted from what this new written Bible will be, but there was excerpts from a 2020 textbook that's used in Chinese universities um, that took the story from John 8 of Jesus saying, whoever, um, whoever is without sin cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that story, he lifts up the woman and he's gracious and he shows mercy and everybody else drops their stones and nobody dies that day, right? Well, in this 2020 textbook from China, it's rewritten so that Jesus actually becomes the one who kills the woman. And so he takes, so that everybody else drops their stones, but Jesus, who has ultimate authority and is without sin, he kills the woman. So yeah. let he without sin cast the first stone. He casts the it's first like, stone. I, right? guess, I guess it's me. I'm up. Exactly. Uh, and then there's another, then wow. he also said in there, he said, he said, quotes from the Bible, like no other gods before me will become. And so I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know the groundwork of where he's getting this necessarily, but, but everything was quoted this way. So the exact quote is that he says, no other gods before me will become resolutely guard against the infiltration of Western ideology. Um, and so essentially taking these stories of mercy of grace, taking these stories of submitting to God and making them about submitting to essentially authority here and now, right? They, uh, why I want to know why the Bible, so like and, and they are as a culture like very not concerned with God at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's part of it too, is that an aspect, he didn't really talk about this a whole bunch, but he said this is also persecution towards other religions as well. So mm -hmm. they're going to try to infiltrate their way into Buddhism is the correct word, right? Oh, Buddhism. oh, so they're not, so they're, okay. They're so trying they're to take like, control. So the world the religion says, yeah. I got you. Um, I got where you. is it? Uh, I don't this know how to pronounce it. fight against religion. Exactly, yeah. So it's not, it's not 100% aimed at Christianity, but Christianity is a part of it, got right? It, got it. Um, Chairman Z, I think there's this is a different meeting of a leader from China, not at this at this, but at this other meeting. I think it was the 19th Party Congress. I think is what it, what it said. It said Chairman Z declared, "We will insist," and I can't pronounce this word at all, but cynicization, which is the uh, the the acceptance of Chinese culture of things uh, of Chinese religions, and provide active guidance for religion and socialism to coexist. And so what they're doing is they're essentially attacking all religions to bring it up to their standard mm. of what they're doing. So it's not actually attacking religions. What would you say? They're like utilizing it to create their own, to, if you will. To, to brainwash their own, yeah. Or, or so this isn't like a, 
they're actually instead of like fighting against, they're like changing the other ones to bring it all together yeah, that's so that a they way can like have more control. Absolutely, over that. yeah. And the, even I didn't I didn't dive too deep into this. I wanted to as well. Obviously, we don't talk, our, but this isn't the whole episode. But um, one of the things that the guy referenced, he said, you would think that Christians would see this and actively fight against it and say, no, we don't want to see we don't want to see these things happen. But actually, Chinese government officials reach out to the Vatican. And they're teaming up with certain Catholic leaders and, and bringing them in. Well, of course they are, because the closer we get to the end, mm -hmm. the more the world will become one. Isn't that mm -hmm. wild? So, like, we know it's so true. Christians we know it's true. Quit freaking out about that. I know, right? It's so, going to happen. Which is great. So the way that he ends kind of his whole discussion, um, he says, despite the persecution of religious groups in China, uh, his name Gallagher, uh, what did I say his whole name was? Mike Gallagher also noted that faith still persists in China. I've heard unthinkable stories of religious persecution, but I've also listened to accounts of underground churches, brave, brave mm. clergy, and steadfast believers, every bit as courageous as, as the saints of the early church. And he said, so, which is, which we know to be true, reg yeah. Regardless, yeah. regardless of the persecution of this world, just like we talked about last week, there, there are the faithful. Yeah. There are the faithful yeah. in the midst of this. Will, sadly, will people succumb to this and think that's what the Bible actually is if they read a rewritten Bible? It, yes, it's, it's sad and we hate it, but there are people that will fall victim to this type of teaching. Um, but in the midst of that, our prayer and our hope is the faith will be able to reach, um, to be able to reach those who are affected by this. So um, I want to know more information. Like I said, everything that I, that I found is all points back to this presentation, this discussion yeah. that happened at this gathering. So I want to see more. I want to keep an eye on it for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, you're right. It's just another step towards the end. Yeah. And but, I think maybe the encouragement should be for us is that we continue to steadfastly proclaim the gospel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The world. The world has been chaos and will continue to be chaos and mm -hmm. will continue to push more towards a one world government, yeah. mm -hmm. one world religion altogether. We shouldn't be shocked by that. No, no yeah. the Bible speaks of it. So like we, we just got to be, you know, diligent and continue to proclaim the gospel. Make Absolutely. Jesus yeah. center. Yeah. Make Christ. doesn't quarter. mean we're not opinionated. doesn't mean we say like, no. this, it's fine to say this is stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And push back against it. But like. If if you change if if we fought so hard that that the it wouldn't happen but if the CCP wasn't able to do this someone else will do it mm -hmm. sure yeah exactly what will not change is Jesus absolutely yeah. you can't you can't kill the gospel no not at all yeah. yeah and it'll persist even in the midst of this it's not it's not like this type of misinformation or uh, manipulation of the gospel is going to take over like you said take, yeah. take over the truth of the gospel like right even if there's one family in christ or sorry in china still faithfully serving christ and following after him that's that's going to be an it's ad, probably a vessel of truth in the midst of that yes and it's probably the enemy going okay the persecution of believers has produced one of the fastest growing churches in the world <laughs> right so instead of that we're going to stop persecuting in the same way we're just going to like make religion like yeah. an okay thing and then what happens is probably the growth of the church mm -hmm. will slow down. Which, mm -hmm. which you've said for a while, Mike, is that one of the greatest lies of the enemy isn't necessarily being a direct attack at the gospel. It's manipulating the truth, it's right? It's close to the truth. Exactly, yeah. So it's, we just it's see- It's a variance of the truth where people are like, oh, this is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. And also anybody listening and watching who has more information concerning this, um, I would love, I'd love more information, more resources. I went through probably- 10 to 15 to 20 different sites. I mean, that's, that's probably not a lot, but like just trying to go through different sites and everything was just quoting this one, um, this one interaction, this one presentation at the gathering of the parliament of the world religions. <laughs> this feels to me a little bit like the Muslims uh, breaking up the East gate in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Like the enemy's going to do whatever he can to like keep the return of Jesus from happening yeah, or yeah. like hinder. It's like, it's, that's super on, funny, man. right? Like breaking up a gate to stop God. It, it, well, I was talking to the yeah. boys about it because they were my older boys yeah. were in Israel this this yeah. summer and saw it, and I was like, "What's funny to me is like they're acknowledging that they actually believe this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if they actually believe it, they would know the bricks aren't going to stop right. him from it's coming. Like, <laughs> it's like, what can your God do about these bricks? Yeah. I put a wall <laughs> up. What's he going to do? <laughs> the other day, uh, we had mentioned this a little bit last. Um, Last week's episode, you had talked about God and darkness and how God doesn't, God can still see in the darkness. I forget what the context was. Yeah, we were Ezekiel about that. 8. And we were, uh, we were reading this book that's called God Made the World. It's a little kid's book. It's about the story of creation. And we get to the first page and it's all dark. And, my, and Riley goes, well, God's going to need some light. He can't, <laughs> he can't see in there. And I was like, well, God can see in the darkness. She goes, nope. <laughs> it's too dark. God can't see. And I was like, well, and then we turned the page anyway. And she's like, see? God created see, Dad, you're see, an idiot. Yeah, come on. What did he do? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, man. He made the light because he was like, dang, it's dark in here. It's so dark. What, what am I going to do? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, God. You know what's funny is, some like, these are really funny conversations now. When she's 13 and 14, I don't think you're going to talk about these things as, like, funny anymore. Yeah, I know, right? You're going to be like, oh, you should hear what Riley told me today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But thankfully, I got a little bit more time and fun first. Oh, man. Ryan, what are we talking about today, man? Today, we are going to talk about... Uh, well, we'll call it renewing our mind. We'll, we'll base it off of Romans 12, but this idea of thinking correctly and making sure that our thoughts are based on the right things about God and what we believe about God. But Ryan, does what we really think have, have an impact on how we live? Well, actually, Pierce, yes, it does. What? So I know, man, <laughs> what? I feel like we've talked about that before. <laughs> Come but, on, dude. Uh, it, it, it's interesting. So we had we had put this on the list, I think, last month as something to talk about, and then I kind of tweaked it a little bit. But what, one of my favorite sermons to preach, maybe my late 20s, early 30s, was this idea of renewing your mind, this idea of thinking properly. And I would go to four text. I would go to Romans 12, 1 and 2, which is where we'll start. Um, but I, I want to present the four text first, and then we can kind of progress through them, I think. Uh, so... So Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the view in, in, in view of God's mercies, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to discern what the will of God is, the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And so don't conform to the pattern of the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be different. And, and then, and all of these verses too, will have, will have that language. Mm -hmm. Like don't, don't conform to what the world does, but change how you think. Mm -hmm. And the results mm -hmm. of that is in this case, you'll know the will of God. Yeah. So the other places that I would use were Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, which says, put off the old self, which is growing corrupt according to the deceitful lust of the flesh, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self created in the likeness of God, righteous and holy. Um, and then uh, Colossians 3, 1, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not the things of the earth. Mm -hmm. And then also um, 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober in your spirit, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Christ Jesus as obedient children. Um, uh, do not conform to the lust of yours in your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, be holy in all your behavior for it is written, be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. So, so renew your mind, Renew your mind. Those are Romans and Ephesians. Set your mind on the things above, the things of heaven, uh, which is the new sermon series that we just started at the church. Yeah. Uh, we're calling it what uh, the the proper perspective, or mm -hmm. yeah, and and so uh, and then gird up the loins of your mind. Think correctly about the things of God. Now, I used all of these verses interchangeably, uh, not interchangeably. I used all of these verses to preach the same point, which I. A lot of times you hear me say, and my sermon was garbage. I, I don't think in this case, my sermon was garbage. I really, truly still believe that as we think rightly on the things of God, it will shape how we do life. It, it shapes how we live. What's interesting now, as I consider context, because in my late 20s and early 30s, I was not very adept at context. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting now is that each of these texts is addressing slightly different issues in the church. Yeah. So... Romans, uh, Romans, we, we talked about this a little bit um, last week, Romans 9, 10, and 11 about the Jews. Paul wants the Jews to believe. The Jews don't believe. They're passionate about God, but not according to the wisdom of Christ. And God has kept a portion of Israel, the remnant, those who would be people of faith of Israel. But the rest were broken off. That's the rest of chapter 11. The rest of Israel was hardened and they were broken off so that the Gentiles could be brought to faith, mm -hmm. so that the Gentiles could be included in the gospel. Um, and, and so he he says, and we don't talk about this very often, but he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, in view of God's mercy. That's where chapter 12 begins. The last eight verses or so of chapter 11, he mentions the word mercy four times. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the mercy to, for the Gentiles to believe, but the mercy also for the Jews to come to faith one day that he is, the gifts of God for the Jews are irrevocable. Mm -hmm. He is going to bring uh, the people of Israel as a nation, as a whole, to faith at one point. Not not historically. Some people think that, that means all Jews from history past, and mm -hmm. Paul's very clear that that's not the case. But there will come a point that 
the present day Israel, whenever that is, at whatever point of time in the future that Christ is about to return, that Israel will turn in faith to Christ. Yeah. And he says, because God is merciful this way, present your lives to God as a living sacrifice. And he says, and don't conform any longer to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, what's super important is he's just told these people, don't, he, he told the Gentiles, he goes, don't boast that God is saving you. He goes, because remember, God broke off the, the rebellious Israel. He goes, God can break off the Gentiles too. This isn't mm. about loss of salvation. This is about softness to receive the gospel. Yeah. And so he says, so don't boast that you're receiving the gospel. This is God's mercy to you. And, and prior to this in Romans, he's been making the case that righteousness is not a matter of the law. It's a matter of faith. Mm -hmm. So we take all of Romans in context and we say, so don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Don't, don't conform to, uh, consistently through Romans, don't, don't boast in yourself. Don't boast in your works. Don't boast in what you've accomplished, but boast in what Christ has done. Yeah. Let, let Christ be your boast. Let that be what your mind is set on, what Christ has accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a call here in Romans 12 to set your mind on the things of Christ. And, and so let me present the other three really quickly, and then we can come back and discuss all of them. Uh, in Ephesians 4, chapters 1, 2, and 3, he is building the case that Jews and Gentiles are both under sin, and Jews and Gentiles both have received salvation by the same means at, that is faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Both Jews and Gentiles were dead in their sins. Both Jews and Gentiles by faith in Christ have been brought to righteousness, and now they've been made into one person. And he says to them prior to uh, 422, he says, so quit acting like the pagans, quit acting like those who don't know God. Yeah. And he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and take up the new man created in the likeness of God, righteous and holy. So this is a really important thing, and he's reminding them that you are righteous and holy in Christ. Mm -hmm. Not we're becoming righteous and holy. You are righteous and holy, and think that way. Yeah, Think according to the righteousness and holiness you have in Christ. Um, and, and he's speaking to the unity of the church that y'all should be on the same page with this. Like y'all should recognize that you're all sinners, that all through Christ. So he's dealing a little bit here with the unity of the church, but again, Christ, right? Um, Peter, 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober in your spirit, set your hope fully on the grace. Peter, in, in the next three pages, it's a very short book, 17 times is going to mention suffering in three pages. And he is dealing with Christians who are scattered throughout the world, who are bearing suffering for being followers of Christ. And he is telling them to gird up the loins of your mind, get your mind ready for action. Another translation says, be sober in your spirit. Like let, let your hope be fully set on the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so let the longing of, of Christ return, let, let your help you, let, let the way you think about Christ return enable you to endure this suffering well. Like in light of the suffering that's going on, like fix your mind on the return of Christ. And then the, the other one, of course, is Colossians. And at the end of Colossians 2, he's talking about the law, self-made religion, uh, asceticism, severity of the body. Colossians 2, beginning in verse 20, he says, he says, quit living according to the law. Quit living according to things like do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are earthly things. They cannot stop sin. And then he rolls around to chapter three. Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not the things of the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ Jesus in God. Mm -hmm. So so he's saying it's not about the law. It's about what Christ has done, which is probably the commonality in all of these things. There's slightly different applications. Sure. Uh, the commonality in all of these things is what Christ has done and the fact that he's coming back. Mm -hmm. the, the application is how the brethren treat each other, uh, how we regard the mercies of God, how we deal with suffering, and how we abstain from law as a means for righteousness. Like Those are kind of some of the points that he makes. But all of it is framed on, and this is where it's really important, and I want you guys to jump in, that, that all of this renewing of the mind is built on who Christ is, what he's accomplished on the cross, and the fact that he's returning. That these are the things that are foundational for the mind of a believer. So you're actually saying when he says be renewed in your mind or set your mind on things above. Like the, the, the core of those things is the list you just gave, right? Like this yeah. is, I think it's, a, I think it's a great point because I think we could dive into people have like created a program, if you will, for yes. like, for like uh, Romans 12 too. Mm -hmm. don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renew of your mind. And then they just go off the rails. Like, all right. So what that looks like to renew your mind is yeah. you don't listen it. to this kind of music. Don't. Yeah. Or, or like, 
make sure you spend this much time doing this particular thing, like read the Bible sure. this much every day or yeah. um, pray this much every day or sure. serve this much. So that we create a program for what it means to be renewed, like in your mind. And I'll say this up front. I, I don't think, I don't think that those things are innately wrong. No. But I think it's not the point Paul's making. No. You know what I mean? I think you, I think you make a great case that to be renewed in your mind is to actually think about who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Like that's the foundation. What he's accomplished. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, um, in the armor of God, <clears throat> um, it's the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind mm -hmm. of the core of what you're saying. Like mm -hmm. who you are in Christ is actually the thing that, if you will, protects your mind. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, and I can think about all these applications of that. Like, um, like how do I, how do I go through hard times in life? It well, doesn't mean I don't suffer, but it means that I don't uh, do it we don't, without hope. Right. We don't mm -hmm. suffer as those. Yeah. So to your point, Micah, you, you said that uh, um, it's programmatic a lot of times when we look at Romans 12. And Bible reading is great. Listening to Christian music, great. Praying, great. It, those things are great in so, insofar as they put your mind on who Christ is and what he's accomplished. Maybe. Yes. But maybe like, maybe that's the, Maybe that's the problem is that um, people do those things prior to what you're talking about. Yeah. So like I can, if I'm not convinced, that might be a good way to say it. If I'm not convinced that I'm righteous in Christ, that my hope is set in Jesus, that I'm okay with God, like that God's okay with me because of the blood of Jesus, his mm -hmm. death and resurrection. If, if I'm not convinced of that up front, I think you could read the scripture and maybe get confused. Sure. Because it mm -hmm. might not, it might be reinforcing things that, uh, oh, here's a good example in in Colossians 2. Like, he doesn't say, um, don't be swayed by bad philosophy. Mm -hmm. He just says, I forget exactly how he says, he didn't say swayed, but like, what does he say in Colossians 2 about philosophy? But it's like, uh, um, let no one take you captive, captive. by yeah, philosophy yeah, yeah. and yeah. empty deceit. He doesn't say bad philosophy. He just says philosophy, mm -hmm. right? So, and then he gives another list, like asceticism, yep. severity to the body, rules and regulations. So like, if, if, if I believed that those things actually gave me value, right? that philosophy, asceticism, the, the not eating or drinking certain things, uh, adherence to a set of rules and regulations, if I was convinced that those things gave me value in life, and then I go read the scripture, what is it going to look like if I read the Old Testament? Oh, yeah. Without the lens of redemption in the gospel, sure. I'm going to go and I'm going to be like, you know what? Daniel went into Babylon and said, you know what? It'd be better if we could eat the food we're used to eating. And they got healthier. And so, you know <laughs> what? That's the food we should eat. Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's <laughs> yeah. where you end up at that place. So that's why I think it might be important yeah. instead of saying like, like, let the scripture bring you to that place. It's almost like, it's almost like you have to recognize who you are in Christ then the scripture becomes the thing that reinforces that because you see it correctly. Yeah. I think there, great point. I think there are a lot of people who read the scripture from the filter of the other stuff, the other Colossians two stuff, and then they get confused. Well, we yeah. talked uh, at Wednesday night Bible study a few weeks ago. We talked about the idea that you know there's a lot of what are being marketed as Christian resources, Christian books, Christian videos, whatever, and all of them sound convincing to a person who doesn't know the Bible well. Mm -hmm. And because, and you can be swayed by every single one, right? Like every wind of doctrine comes and sways you to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you're right. There has to be a foundational understanding of who Christ is. Dude, we need to talk about that sometime. Like how individual Bible reading potentially mm -hmm. could be dangerous for the person who does not understand who Christ is and what he's accomplished. Or yeah. maybe not dangerous. Potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it could be like... Uh could set you back a few. I think maybe the reason I'm struggling with dangerous is I feel like the spirit's the means by which the understanding yeah, yeah, comes. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So it's like, I'm not sure we could say the spirit's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I think it could be, it could be a hindrance maybe on sure. your growth. Maybe well, something to, like that. To your point though, like if your framework is wrong, you're going to read the Bible wrong. Yep. Yeah. And that yeah. was my thought. Like when, when he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind, I think you make a great point that this is, he's probably, it's probably simpler than we make it. It's probably yeah. him saying like, like, you, this is who you are now in Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change, like literally, not like change the way you do daily life, change the way you think about yourself. Sure. Mm -hmm. Here's who you are in Christ. Let that now affect the way you do sure. your yeah. life, but not vice versa. And I think a lot of people, 
approach that from that perspective of like being transformed by the renewing of your mind means I do these certain things to, to, to renew my mind. Yeah. It's interesting because in Colossians, Paul says, put on the new self, mm-hmm. which is made again in the image and likeness of God, which I love that he says again, almost yeah. like a return to the way God meant it in the beginning. Um, yeah. But he says, put it on. And the word there, the Greek word is like to, to like put on a piece of clothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like a, uh, it's not like I've got a whole closet open and mm-hmm. I go, you know what? To uh, put on the new self, I have to take this shirt first and put it on. <laughs> then I got to take these socks and put them on. <laughs> and then it's not this program pattern where like, as long as I do it in the right order, I yeah. put on the new self. It's literally just like, here's who you were, mm-hmm. but you've been made new. So clothe yourself with that newness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you used to be someone who um, conformed to the world, but don't do that any longer because you've been made new. So be transformed by changing the way you think about who you are in Christ. I think yeah. it's kind of the, to your point, a really good way of thinking about that. That's a bad way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh, our our view of who Christ is. And we talked about this. Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago as well. And and it's what the whole sermon series right now that we're doing this fall is mm-hmm. like uh, having a proper perspective, thinking about things through the lens of Christ rather than through the lens of the temporary world. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we tend to think about. We, we tend to think about our lives and our kids' lives and our marriages in terms of how they look for 70 or 80 years. And it, I guess from a practical standpoint, that makes sense to people. You're like, well, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm married to my wife. Michelle and I are closing in on 17 years. You just had 20? Yep. Um, and Which was funny because everybody's like, what are you guys doing? Well, we're actually doing a big celebration for our 21st because... Uh, we were behind on planning and didn't have enough money to do. What we to do. So <laughs> our twenty first anniversary will be like our yeah, that's 20th good. Celebration. Nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the <laughs> you're celebrating the beginning of your third decade. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's a new tradition. We'll start, but it's uh, <laughs> like we, we tend to think about things. So, you're like from a practical standpoint, you weren't able to do something big for your twentieth anniversary. You're hoping to be able to do that for your twenty first anniversary. You're putting some time and some money aside for that. But we, so we think about those things, but. How we treat our wives, Pierce, you're five and a half years married? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2018. Yeah. So the way we think about our wives, the way we think about our kids, and we all have kids at different stages in life. Mm-hmm. Um, still can't believe that Seth is a senior. That's crazy. Right. Uh, I might not be able to afford to do anything next year. <laughs> yeah, you might not be able to. <laughs> so the, the, way we, the way we Come think on. about <laughs> these things is directly impacted by what we believe about Christ and his mm-hmm. return. I, yeah. I think, I think, yes. I think believing the return of Christ, I, I think a lot of people are really willing to believe in the cross and the shed blood and in the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And those things should be sufficient in, to <laughs> shape how we live lives. But I think in addition to that, I think what gets neglected is focusing on the return of Christ in the coming kingdom. And as we think about those things, it, it should shape how we treat other Christians. Yeah, it should yeah. sh- go ahead. So you said something last episode that's interesting along the same lines. Like p- there are people who are freaking out about like, am I going to take the mark of the beast as oh, someone yeah. who's a follower of Jesus? So same idea. Like if, if my confidence rests in the return of Jesus, mm-hmm. I don't actually care. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm not concerned about it because my hope doesn't rest in what I'm capable of doing. Like right. f- flip that on its head for people. Like what you're saying in that moment, if you're scared of taking the mark of the beast as a Christian <laughs> is that you think the power rests in you. Right. That somehow, even though Jesus redeemed you by his blood and his resurrection and he's coming again, you're like, that's okay. But I'm more powerful than that because if I take this mark, I've ruined it all. <laughs> what if I get it by accident? Mike? Yeah. <laughs> what if I don't know? <laughs> so <laughs> like I'm, I'm kind of anti all that stuff, but not because it's the mark of the beast, right. because I think it's all stupid and right, ridiculous. Yeah. And but I think that you're to your point, like we wouldn't be freaking out about end time stuff if our confidence rests in the return of Jesus. I, yeah. I forget who the pastor is that says it. I've seen his quote a few times, and he says that uh, one of the things that shows that Christians don't have their the right view of Christ is that they're more worried about the Antichrist. Yeah, than they are. That's a great point. Than they are hopeful about the return of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. And, and so we're, yeah, because what we know about him is that he sucks and he's going to get destroyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why do we care? Yeah. You know, like what we should long for is the return of Jesus, but, uh, our, our suffering, I, I think it's interesting because somebody asked me, uh, a few weeks ago, they said, do you think that God ever brings suffering into our lives? And, you know, or does he just allow it? And I said, I think both, you know, and, 
And I said, I, I think sometimes we suffer because we're in a sinful, fallen, broken world. Mm. But also Paul says that in, in 2 Corinthians 1, he says in Asia, he said he suffered to the point of death. He, he despaired of life, mm. thought he had received a sentence of death. But this was so that he would no longer rely on himself, but rely on God who raises the dead. And so Paul is acknowledging there, I don't think we talk about it often, but Paul is acknowledging there that there had to be a change in his mindset mm -hmm. because he was at the place where he's despairing of life itself. And the result of that was that it thrust him into the presence of Christ to think rightly about these things so that he would quit resting on his own power. So maybe, Micah, that's exactly the problem. Maybe maybe the problem, maybe every problem we have with, with disunity in the body, with our inability to lay down the law, with our inability to lay down our sin, with our inability to delight in the return of Christ, maybe all of it is because we're trying too darn hard to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Or at all. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to do it ourselves at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like it's us. We're we're trying to yeah, be better. It's it's no a hundred percent that. I mean, that's yeah. what Galatians' argument is. Paul's in Galatians yeah. is like you're trying to do things according to the flesh yeah. when you've been given the Spirit. Like, stop trying to do it according to your own yeah. like fleshly ability, your own right. power, but rest on the Spirit to do it. And then he culminates it in chapter five, I think, right. verse sixteen. Yeah, walk with the Spirit, and you won't gratify the desires of your flesh of mm -hmm. what you can do on your own. And I think that's no, you're totally right. Huh, interesting thought on renewing your mind. Um, there's, this seems like there could be a sense where that's actually a laying down of your own abilities. Hmm. I, because it's, like you pointed out the context is the yeah. law. The, the core of the law is my own ability to yeah, accomplish yeah. a set of rules and regulations for the sake of righteousness. So if he's combating that by saying, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, there has to be a sense of that where it's like, I'm saying... Yeah, I'm done. Oh, so interesting enough, right before that, um, in verse one, when he says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, this isn't a continual thing. Mm -hmm. The right. word there in the Greek is like, I'm Perfect laying tense. myself on the yeah. altar once before God saying I'm yours. Yeah. And I think it's maybe a, a carrying over of that idea to, to verse two, like being transformed by the renewing of your mind is like, almost like those are correlated. Sure. I lay myself figuratively on the altar before God and go, I'm yours. Do with me what you will. My life is yours. It's, it's a rejection of yeah. my ability to accomplish righteousness on my own, yeah. resting in the blood and, and resurrection of Jesus and the hope of his return. And then saying, God, my life's yours. And what that does is if that's in the core of my mind, that's saying, I'm not trying to do it on my own. I'm not yeah. trying to be conformed to the pattern of the world any longer. I'm just letting God yeah. remind me of who he is and what he's done in me. And then I go live from that. Yeah, you had said a few weeks, maybe a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, I'm not sure, but um, you were talking about salvation now and who we are in Christ now, and that's a new covenant. And too often, what we tend to do is say this is a slightly tweaked covenant, or just mm -hmm. like we, we take the old covenant, we try to, well, yeah, but now Jesus is kind of adding on to that. But no, we have to acknowledge the fact the old covenant is gone, new yeah. covenant is here in Jesus. And so, at, building upon that, I love that perspective of renewing of your mind because he's saying, listen, it's done, it's over with. Like, don't don't think the way you used to think at all. Don't just try to tweak it, renew it. Mm, that's right? a good point. Be, yeah. be done with the past. Like, like you said, a one time laying before God and then renewing of your mind as well. You're, yeah, don't think any way you used to before, not just a little bit, not at all. Here's so to renew that, it. To that point, it can't be a program for mm -hmm. this. What I mean is like, I think we would struggle then to say like, to renew your mind in this context is to like have a pattern where you're, okay, even something really good, like reading the Bible on a yeah. consistent daily basis. I love that idea. Do it. Yeah. But that, I don't think that's what he's talking about here. No. I don't think that innately renews your mind. I think what he's speaking of here is is a change of mind. It's yes. similar yeah. to And the Bible can be helpful in that. Yes, yeah. once once you're at that place. Like I I think it's similar to like in, in Colossians, put on the new self. It's mm -hmm. change your mind. Like stop conforming to the pattern of the world, but change your mind. Not tweak it. That's a great point, Pierce, because I think mm -hmm. a lot of us do that. Well, like I know who I am in Jesus now. I'm basically going to continue the same way I was with just like some little pushes. Yeah. And my hope is, I hear people say this, my hope is, is that the more that I, you know, do these particular programmatic things, that that will get better. I'll say this up front. I, I think that Paul's implication here is that it's not a progression. Mm -hmm. It's not a tweak, but it's a complete change, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the change is made, here's my guess. Once the change is made and you lay yourself on the altar before God and say, I'm going to think correctly. Here's who I am in Christ. Here's what God's done for me. Here's who God is. Then you add in the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, watch yeah. what happens when you read the scripture every day. Yeah. There is a drastic difference for me. I probably haven't told you guys about this 
very often. I think I felt it more this summer than ever, um, which is like a, I think just a, a realization that I've got to change my summers up a little bit, but I, I, I'm in this like really consistent pattern of I'll, I'll run the disc golf course in the mornings and I'll listen to the scripture. Um, I'm like in the workshop, in the wood shop, and I'm listening to the, like, I listened to Philippians yesterday for like, I don't know. I listened to it over and over again for like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I went. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for a sure. A whole lot. Cause it's not very, and I had, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't get repeat on the dwell app. So I had like, it would like start Colossians. I'm like, dang it. I don't want to start Colossians. <laughs> Just go back. Anyways, yeah. There's a repeat. I'm sure. <laughs> but 45 minutes of Philippians. And I think I'd listened to something earlier. Six that morning to nine as well. times. Depending okay. On, yeah. It was a lot. Like, yeah. I feel like I can, I can't quote it, but like I could, if yeah. you started reading it, I could like fill in all the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have felt different. Um, that much time in the word has made me feel different. Oh yeah. Agreed. The summer's not like that. I'm not in a pattern because sometimes my days are like seven in the morning till yeah, and, midnight and, and there's no consistent pattern and I'm not a super structured guy. So mm -hmm. like it's, it's there, there are some times in the summer where like, I will have no joke. I will have like four or five days where I haven't even like had, I mean, I'm, I'm at a church camp. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. like there's a lot of scripture, but I'm saying like for me, I haven't had that moment where I'm just letting it pour over yeah. my mind and my heart. And I feel different. This is a little bit anecdotal, but like, I think there's a sense where I have a longing for the scripture. Mm -hmm. I have a longing to learn from the Lord to let the spirit teach me in that way. That when I'm not like, if you will, quench, I have a thirst. It's not quenched. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like something's different in me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that is, but I think it's because I, my mind has been changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been renewed. I think without that, I would probably come off saying something's wrong. I need to do these things to get back to a place where yeah. I feel right again. Yeah. And what I'm actually expressing is no, no, no. I, I know I'm good with God right? because of Jesus. What yeah, I'm expressing your Bible is, reading does not endear no, you to him. But I like long for it because yes. it, yeah. it affects me. It's, I mean, it's a terrible example probably too, because it's not good for you. But like, there are very few days where I have to go without Dr. Pepper. And those days it's like, I cannot wait to get one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Once I've tasted the goodness of it, I can't wait to get it. And you actually see that concept throughout the new Testament. Yeah. Sure. This insatiable desire. Once you've had a taste of like the goodness of God as someone who's been made new. Yeah. It's like you you don't want anything else. I, mm -hmm. I consider all things a loss compared to the surpassing yep. greatness of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. So I think yep. that people miss that. This isn't a program to get you to a place where you go, oh, I'm good. Yeah. It's the recognition of what God has done for you through Jesus, that that yep. transforming of your mind, re sorry, renewing of your mind mm -hmm. that allows you then to experience the goodness and joy of all these yeah. things that God has for you. Well, and what we miss is be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The result of having yes. a renewed mind is transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, Oh, that's a great point. That's, that's the result of it. And, and so people work really hard on transforming and don't work very hard on renewing, which is the thing that yeah. causes the transformation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're putting their effort into the Bible reading church attendance, all these Bible studies, which could, could, if, if, if what's being taught is correct, it could eventually result in you thinking differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But, but, but what's transformative is thinking correctly. Yep. And, and not the program. Right. Yeah. That is a great point. It is the renewing of your mind that causes the transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, for whatever reason, I think as a culture, Christian culture, we, we want to hang on to our own abilities so yeah. intensely. Yeah. Well, it's like not enough. I, it's like, why is it not enough to say, man, if I think correctly about who I am in Christ, that actually affects the rest of my life. Yeah. Why is that less mm -hmm. valuable than saying, well, you got to do this and do this and do this and do this so you can get to that point? It's weird. Yeah, it's a weird and a weird, I don't know the right terminology to say, but like a, a uh, you have to have the the fruit of, of being productive, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like, so people will think if it's just happening in your mind, then it's no big deal. It's kind of, we had talked a little <laughs> bit, um, was that the beginning of this episode or last week episode where uh, talking about protecting Ryan's time as a teacher and how too often, like when people think of the schedule, a, a productive schedule, where you got to be in the office this many hours, you got to be doing this many meetings, you got to be doing, and that's all their perspective. Like, oh, you're just spending, you're just hanging out and doing coffee with people. No, 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 no. You need to be at these meetings. You need to be filling out this paperwork. You need to be <laughs> in the office. Like, don't be a pastor, be an administrator. Exactly. So like the yeah. view, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this will kind of begin to die out, but like, I think the whole view of productivity is based off of a full schedule and based off yep. of a business mindset is really what it is. So For sure. They busyness. Apply busyness. They apply that in to uh, a walk with Christ as well. It's not, yeah, that's and, fair. and I don't, I, what's funny is I think when you, I shouldn't say this, I, 
What I was gonna say is when you put people when you put people in a corner, I bet they would actually be like, no, 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 no I'm not saying that. But Don't they're showing it by corner. their actions. Um, but I can't say that holistically because I have never had that conversation. But that being said, people look at you. What you said exactly right a second ago, Ryan, that people focus so much on that transformation. People the, because and their actions therefore show thinking on Christ isn't enough. I have to I have to bring about the change. I have to be a catalyst. I have to be productive. If I'm not productive, who am I in Christ? Who am yeah. I? What, yeah, where do where do I lie? I have to yeah. show my identity by my productivity. Well, that makes it, sense. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live the life that I now live in this body. I live by faith mm -hmm. in the son of God who loved me and gave himself <laughs> up for me. Galatians two, right? Yeah. So, so the life, the doing mm -hmm. is produced by the faith, the righteous, the trans, faith. yeah, the transformation yeah. is produced by the renewing of the mind. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're chasing change without changing the thought process. And, and change without a correct thought process will fail. Mm -hmm. It will. And then you're going to feel really hopeless because you're going to say, man, I've been reading my Bible for six months. I've been going to church. I've been doing all the things. Why is nothing different? Because you're still, you're still programmed to think that it's about what you've done. Mm -hmm. Your thinking is still wrong. Well, and yeah. at the core of that really is, is a perspective of like, if that's your, if that's what you're doing, like you're, you're, you're trying to accumulate all these things to do so that you can be changed. Sounds like it's probably about how other people view you. Mm -hmm. Probably. And that's the opposite of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, this is a recognition of who you are in Christ that you don't actually care yeah. about people's viewpoint um, of you because yeah. you, all you care about is God's viewpoint of you through Jesus. And so I right. think that's, I mean, I bet even like back in the day when you were reading the Bible a whole lot early on, part of that was to prove to people that you knew the scripture. Oh, 100%. So like what's changed now is I think... I think you've learned what, more. Whatever has happened in the last year has never happened in my life. That's what I was going to say. Like, I think you've learned more in the last year, probably spending about the same amount of time in the Bible as you did at one point more. Okay. But it's, it's different, right? It's different. You would say like, like it feels to me like, tell me if this is wrong. It feels to me like less effort for you in terms of like back in the day, it was almost like a, like a chore. You it, loved it, but like, it was like, it I gotta wasn't, do this. It wasn't a chore, but as you've pointed out before, if I missed a day, I hated myself yes. and mm -hmm. felt like a failure. So it was still a standard. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. And it has ceased to be a standard and has become about, uh, hunger. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I think is the point I was making. Yeah, like yeah, I, it I, is. I've been, totally the point I've been making. sensing that lately too, like personally in my life, like there's this hunger and desire that I think I've I think I've felt before, I, but I think I've never recognized how much of that is is based on my perspective of who I am in Christ. I, I texted eight people at the beginning of this month, four couples, and I said, I am asking you if you would commit to praying for me for the rest of this month every single day. And I said, yeah, well, this was in August. And I, I said, uh, I said, because I don't know what God is doing in my life, but I feel differently mm -hmm. about him and the things of God than I have ever felt before. And I am more excited and more awake. I don't know what it, I, I don't even know how to describe it right now. Yeah. Something is different, that, but that is not, that is not because of works I have done. I know what it is. It is because of, of my mind being set on Jesus. I know what it is. Well, I think it's that there was, there was something you have, you've acknowledged that you were holding on to last year. Yeah, well, we talked about that some. Yeah, and sure. I think once that's gone, that that was the last thing I think for you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that was, the, if you will, like that was the last filter that you didn't recognize in terms of who you are, because yeah. that wasn't about what you do. That was about how you thought about yourself. Yes. Mm. So, I don't know if we've ever have we talked about that on this podcast. I don't know if we have. I don't know. So here it is: is September twenty twenty three. In we have briefly been out of full in April yeah. twenty two. We came over here to record three podcasts one day. And before I, I usually pick the topics and, and I had picked the, a topic that we still haven't done <laughs> because, because we <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> because the, the wound is too deep. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, I can't even I revisit can't do it. it, man. I can't just do blackout it. Blackout when it gets brought up. <laughs> <laughs> we picked a topic and I don't even remember what it was. Oh, I do. I I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, it was the fear of the Lord. And, and I made You're a comment. Wrong. I'm just kidding. I, know. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I made, I made a comment. Pierce is setting up the cameras. I'm eating whatever food you had brought for us that day. And, and I said, I think we should talk about the fear of the Lord. You said, great, but this, and yeah, you had some questions, Micah. And I got defensive and you were like, whoa, 
why'd you get defensive? And you're like, we've been friends for how long? 20 years? He's like, we've had these conversations. Why, why are you defensive? And I defended my position again. And you're like, why are you doing that? Like, you don't normally do that. You normally, we'll talk about it from the scripture. Why are you defending a position that we haven't talked through, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I don't, I don't remember, you were like, we need to get to the bottom of this. And, and you, you said some things that I can't say now <laughs> <laughs> because it's being recorded, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll say the nice version of it. You, you said, you said, so basically Ryan, what you're saying to me, this is Micah talking. Micah looks at me and goes, basically Ryan, what you're saying to me is screw you, Micah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't care about you at all. Um, I don't value our friendship. And, and, uh, and I, I got to the point where I said, I don't, I don't really believe this was August 22 or mm -hmm. April 22. I said, I don't really believe that you guys, Pierce and Micah, like me. Mm -hmm. I don't really believe that you respect me. And Micah goes, so, so he go, Micah goes, you've known me for 20 years. Would I spend 20 years with a person that I don't respect? He's like, my gosh. He goes, I wouldn't spend lunch with a person I didn't respect. He was like, are you kidding me now? He goes, so it's just a big screw you to Micah then, isn't it? And I was like, can we just record? And you're like, no. You're like, hell no, we can't record. We're going to get to the bottom of this because something is off in the way you're thinking. Look, you're a different person than you were 20 years ago when I first met you, but something is clearly still broken in you. And I love you we remember get... in such detail. I don't remember any of that. It shaped me. At one point, point i got up and left the studio yeah <laughs> and took a walk yeah, yeah, yeah and came back to get my butt kicked more by you guys <laughs> you guys kicked my butt for three and a half hours <laughs> and said if if you can't trust us and you can't believe that we trust you then how do we do ministry effectively yeah and I went, crap, what is still broken in my head? Mm -hmm. Something is still broken in my head from my childhood. And if you don't know that backstory, we don't have time for that. <laughs> so something's still broken. There's just still a fear that I'm allowing in, even in yeah. my, these close relationships mm -hmm. that I have. Uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, there wasn't a time, Micah, back then, it, like probably at least once a week, I was thinking you were mad at me about something. That's so funny. Um, which, okay, to give you a little bit of grace in that, like probably a lot of people think that. <laughs> <laughs> Except for not a lot of people have the relationship sure. you and I have, yeah, which yeah. was the point that you were making. Right. Yeah. Right. And and so so I spent then May and June doing a deep dive and really asking God to root out in me what this fear was because yeah. it boiled down to fear. Mm. Uh, and I and I just said, well, that that's where I came to in two months. I was like, this is boiling down to fear, and like God, I'm not trusting you, mm. I'm not honoring you. And so then that was, that was, uh, May and June last year. And then July and August, I started kind of moving forward with some stuff. And at, by the end of August, 2022, I had, I had kind of just been reading the Bible about one to two times a year. It just kind of maybe once, maybe once and a half uh, a year, it, which was slower for me. I, I had for a few years been doing it about three times a year. So it was a little bit slower for me. And and I just, I don't know, something clicked in me at the end of August last year. And I just thought, I just, I, I need, I need to really, I need to, this anew. Like yeah. it, it wasn't, it wasn't even like I should want this anew. It was like, I need it. You like felt I, something different. Yeah. Holy man. And I became more hungry for the Bible at the end of August, 2022 than I have ever been in my life. And that appetite hasn't gone anywhere. I think mm. that's the way, the, I think it's an apt description because that's what has seemed different. I think in the past you had um, a desire to know the scripture. Yes. And I think now it's, that's still there. But I think when, one of the things that seems to me like it's different about you is you have this insatiable desire for God to know him. If we're being completely honest, I have spent, and I still deal with this from time to time. I'm just better at putting it aside now, mm -hmm. but I have spent my entire life feeling stupid. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a two decades, two and a half decades of me knowing the Bible so that I, I wouldn't feel stupid. Mm, mm, I got you. Which the result of that, like my aim was to know God better, yeah, but mm -hmm. underlying there was, was still, still, I think yeah, that's what I meant. Like there was still that one thing that seemed to like yeah. be holding whatever desire you're talking about you have now back. And, and so maybe to, maybe to reiterate something earlier, maybe to recant a little bit, I, I don't think any of us would say that, that the time you spent in the scripture prior to last year was not a benefit. 
You know what I mean? Like no, because my aim was still Jesus. Right. There was the still whole time. a lot of benefits, but yeah. there. Let's say it like this: instead of instead of saying those things that had been hindrances had been removed. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. Like there's a level of growth in you that has happened in the last year, year and a half that that wasn't as quick before, and I think it's because Agreed. that. I think it's because you have finally come to the place where Romans twelve two is true for you. Yeah, like you've been renewed by yes, it, it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, and it's showing in your life. And I think that's and maybe an encouragement for people who would hear this is like, man, Ryan, this was a progression for you. Yes, I have a feeling though, if someone had come to you ten years ago and said, "This is," I think what Paul's saying here. I think it would have radically changed your life 10 years ago. Yes. And not last year. Yes. So I don't think because it was a progression for you, that means it's a progression for everybody. Agreed. Because I think that if someone can hear this now, hear us say this now, what Paul is saying in all these passages about being changed in your mind. Yep. If you were able to come to a place today where you said, man, I recognize who I am in Christ that that can radically transform your life today. today. There doesn't have to yeah. be a progression. Now, Agreed. I, there are people who have a lot of baggage like you in terms of, the, I, you know what I'm saying? Like I do. Yeah. things in your head. Yeah. Um, we've talked about this before. I I sometimes wonder why God made us friends because it seems like I'm the worst friend for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all, all the, like, all those things that are in your head aren't there for me. And it, se- yeah. it seems like it would be, the, it seems like it'd be easier for you if you had a friend um, it's even easier for you guys because mm-hmm. of your the past with your dads, like yeah. to be able to share kind of empathetic stories about that. I have no mm-hmm. empathy for that. <laughs> like, you know, I could have that's rather bad way to say. It. I have no sense of of the feeling you guys have. So, sure. but I I think what it is is I have a feeling that God moving us forward um, is able to use my lack of um, feeling in those areas to maybe push you. Yeah, and you're intense feeling in those areas to remind me that's where the majority of people are. Mm. Yeah. So I, I'm shaped as a pastor because now through the lens of you, I'm able to understand more of people's hurt, more of the sure. baggage that lies in their head and in their heart and in their emotions. Well, it, in it. In, and especially in the last decade, how many times have you texted me or called me and said, okay, give me a frame of reference yeah. for this. Because like, I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't, sorry. I don't feel right. the same feeling people have in those moments. I, right. Um, I, yeah. So I, I lack that. I probably do. I lack the empathy. I think for people who proclaim faith in Jesus, but still who who still hang on to things that are not Jesus. Yeah, but it's always it's why I have so often come to you and said, "Okay, help me frame this thought correctly." Yep, yep. So I'm sure that's why it is that yeah. it's been such a benefit. But I always think like, God, I gotta like, it's gotta be the hardest thing for you to have a friend like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, I, I'm not, I'm not timid. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm not fragile. Mm -hmm. And, and so I choose the friends that I have for that reason, because I, my, my aim has been Jesus. I had a guy ask me a couple of weeks ago, I guess I had said in a sermon on Sunday that I I became a Christian when I was three, knew I wanted to preach at four. And he was like, how, like, how does that Mm -hmm. happen? I was like, I I can't tell you how that happens for anybody but me. You know I mean? I just know that I know that I've never changed my mind about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is who I've wanted to be and I've wanted to know the Lord. And which makes it pretty obvious that it's a spirit once you know your background and upbringing. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like that would, most people who went through, you went through what you went through would be like, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. I don't want to have anything to do with church. So yeah, I think it's, it's proof that it's a spirit who mm-hmm. moved in you. I think, I think you're in the same boat, Pierce, to some degree. Mm-hmm. Not, I mean, you had, a, your mom was awesome, but I yeah, think yeah. that like, you know, you, I'm sure you had the same feeling. So I, yeah. I, I I'm just bringing that up because I think that there's, I think we probably, uh, the three of us probably represent where a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people. We're a good mix. Yeah. Yep. Who are in different phases of life, who have different things that have, have affected them. I think you guys, my guess is that you're like the things that have held you back is a perspective of who you are in Christ that is mm-hmm. affected by your past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the negative for me is that I have because of my, because my upbringing was, was free of all the chaos y'all's had. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a chance for me to think that my, my good life makes me different or mm-hmm. better. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Sure. Or the fact that I learned the scripture at a young age because of my dad investing into me makes me, 
a better person or a better Christian. So like, there's, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. still resting in me in yep. the same way that you rest in you because yep. of the chaos of the past. Sure. And the point Paul's making is stop resting in you. Yeah. You know, be transformed by the renew of your mind, change how you think, remember who you are in Christ and let that be the foundation now for how you yeah. go live. Mm-hmm. And, and he reminds them in, in these places, like quit behaving the way you used to behave. Mm-hmm. Like in all four of these texts, he was like, who you were is invalid. Yeah. Like you're, you're not that anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is interesting, isn't it? Like, um, I would imagine that all three of us would say, especially over the last eight years, eight and a half years as our theology has really shaped and, and changed. I, I would imagine that all of us would say we're probably going to raise our kids differently than we were raised. I think mm. probably most people say that, you yeah, know, yeah. but like, um, one of the things that for me at least was a reality is, and I, I hate that this is true because it's so cliche, uh, but I, I felt love was something to be earned. And so that sucks. in, in my, in my walk with Christ, I didn't see how that could be any different. Mm-hmm. So if I, if I, <laughs> I mean, like realistically, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I was a good kid. I did very, I did, I was a very good kid. If I did anything that I thought wasn't good, it didn't matter, right? If I did something I thought wasn't good, I was so ashamed and just, just knew mm-hmm. that God was so ashamed of me and hated yeah. me so much and so disappointed in me. I'd let him down. Mm-hmm. And, and I am doing so much in my power to make sure that my boys don't grow up with that mindset. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I, we've talked about this before. I'm not, I don't do family Bible study every week and people can think about me, whatever they want to think about me with that. And that's fine. But we have a lot of theological discussions in our home. Mm -hmm. Most of them are five minutes or less. They're just kind of in passing. But one of the things that I did a couple of months ago was I bought a little small dry erase board that I hung in the boys bathroom and about every 10 week or 10 days to two weeks, I go in there and I just change something and I, and I make it about who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm just so they're seeing it. That's cool. Every yeah. day. Hmm. And it's a good idea. And and so like That's the one great I just changed yesterday and it's it's funny because I've started thinking about crap, Wednesday nights we have Bible study at our house and people go and use their bathroom and it's so I'm like, ooh, people are coming tonight. I want to change how they think about themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm even doing it for the people who are coming over. So like the one I just did for my boys is I said, uh, the God of all glory, the God of all creation delights in you not because of bad things avoided or good things done, but because your faith is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Love that. And I, and I am specifically picking things. I write something new every couple of weeks, specifically shaping how they would think of themselves in Christ. It's a phenomenal idea. Uh, and it's, and it, because I don't want my boys to grow up thinking it's something they have to earn. Mm -hmm. Can I make a point on that? Yeah. No, I'm I sorry. Don't this think, podcast is I don't just think for me and Pierce. No. I don't think it's that you're actually trying to change your upbringing, because I think that's a that's a that's a worthless pursuit. No, I you're think, right. You're right. I think what you're actually saying is because you've recognized these important foundational things from the scriptures, now you want your boys to grow up with that. You're saying those important foundational thoughts in your head were void when you were growing up. I, yeah. I'm still learning them in my 40s. Right. Mm-hmm. So this has. N- I think this is. I think we have to move forward in life. Like, instead of saying, like, I'm so affected by the past. Agree. To be honest, I don't really care. Like, I had a great upbringing. Yeah. There are things that I I would say, like, I, I didn't love this about my sure. upbringing, but all of us have it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the goal isn't, isn't to say, because my parents did this, I want to do it different. The goal is to say, here's what the scripture reveals about who yeah. we are in Christ yeah. and who yeah. God is. And I want my kids to know that. Yeah. yeah. Instead of it having anything to do with my upbringing. No, you're right. Yeah. It, it's it's still easy for me to think, like, I don't want my kids to feel the way that I feel. But mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. but the the heart of it is I want them to think rightly on Christ. Yeah, yeah because yeah. the flip of that would be if you if you had grown up feeling that way. Would you not teach your boys that because you had never felt opposite? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it can't be about that. You're right. Uh, it, it is, I think, instinctive. Yeah. For us to think, I want to do it differently. One hundred percent. I think too, like having having known Christ and having known the gospel and the truth. There's an aspect of like, I want to communicate how excited I am that my kids get to grow up in a world that I didn't grow up in. And yeah. so you're right. We need to change the language completely and not make it not make the motivator the past. But I think we can yes. still acknowledge like, sure. 
I'm I'm so excited that like they don't they don't have to worry about the thing or hopefully don't have to worry about the things that that happen to me because I'm my mm-hmm. my motivator is Christ my motivator yeah. isn't myself my motivator is this and so it sh- it, tw- it shapes the perspective for sure um, but I think that I think that just realizing just now hearing y'all talk about it helps me shape like how I want to talk about it because I'm can be... excited about yes. about Christ and about yeah. implementing that in my household I was talking to not because and you're not excited that they don't have to I think that's what I'm saying like yeah, if that's exactly. a reality. It's fine, but if that's the motivation for doing absolutely. it, it's sure. probably not the best motivation. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Agreed. I I remember talking to the youth a few, this probably a few months Jerk. ago now, um, but I was like, uh, I was teaching something, and I my whole motivator was correcting my past, mm. and then it hit me mid sermon. I was like. I can cross out 10 minutes of my notes right here because I don't need to correct that for you. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm teaching you guys now, like not, not putting the focus on me, but like my motivator shouldn't be to correct the past. Like, or have to, you guys ever had a bad youth past? Uh, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited that my boys are under your tutelage. Good. That's what I say every week too. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, I am dare a, you to say that on Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my tutelage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I chose that word on purpose because I, you know, yeah, I like words. This is good. I enjoy it. I enjoy this. Um, you're, you're right though. Fierce mm-hmm. that like, that's our tendency is yeah. to go like, here's, here was the way it was for me. Let me like shape it for me, you. Yeah. But, I mean, to make a funny example, like n- none of my kids have to worry about playing their records backwards and hearing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I watch videos on that. Right. Yeah, so I mean, that's what I mean. Let me make sure you kids don't hear these records backwards. You know what I mean? So yeah. like there's, there's a sense where we want, we want to, mm-hmm. I think innately say, I don't want you to, to have to deal with these things. Um, but I, I think the, the better perspective is to move forward and say like, Absolutely. here's, here's who we are in Christ, mm-hmm. regardless of my past. Mm-hmm. I want this to be the foundation for you. Cause Technically speaking, mm. we have the opportunity as fathers to 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 almost like blank slate our kids with yeah. with the gospel at the core moving forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually think that if we bring in the past, we're bringing in a filtered foundation. Absolutely. It's not a blank slate. Mm. Yeah. It is a slate that is built on. Uh, for example, um, if if all your kids heard from you is insecurities because of your past, there will be a point in their life when they go. I wonder if those insecurities are built into me too. Mm-hmm. If I tell my kids, here's what it was like to be a cocky prick as a teenager, there will be a sense of them where they'll be like, well, maybe that's just who I am. You yeah, see what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have the opportunity as fathers to have a blank slate and not talk about that at all. Mm-hmm. Talk about the scripture. And then as the foundation is built, then we can, as we see stuff in our kids, if I see one of my kids being a cocky prick, I can be like, hey dude, let me share some of what God did in my life yeah, yeah. dealing with through that. You see your kids dealing with insecurity. You can say, here's what God did in my life yeah. versus yeah, yeah. setting the foundation of like, here's the way it was for me. This is to be expected. Because then we're putting ourselves in as the foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, well, and also, and also to too, over. like we, those of us here, like in the way that we're leading, we would never want our kids to say when they're leading their families to say, well, I'm just teaching this because my, my, my dad always taught me. We yeah. would never want them to say right. it that way. We'd True. want them to say, this is the God of the universe. This is a, this is a God who loves you and who saves you. Truth, we, the scripture we, says. We don't yeah. want the motivator to be us. We want the motivator to be Christ and we're hoping to Absolutely. pass that on. So even if they're teaching something good in the future, to flip it on its head, yes. and we don't want the motivators to be that. And this is the opportunity as fathers, as parents. How did this become a to, parenting part? <laughs> yeah, I know, right. As no, parents, parenting part three. To, yeah. say, to say, we're going to help our kids be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're oh, able good. to help set back. that, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> able to set that foundation. Like, yeah. Yeah. we're going to help you start at a place that we didn't get to start at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, it took us a long time to move to this place. Yeah. You yep. get to start here. Yep. And it's so exciting to see that. You're right. I mean, obviously age isn't, isn't a factor necessarily with salvation or anything like that, but to see that there's not going to be those years of hindrances of, of growth and things like that, that just yeah. to be excited that you could just take the freedom in Christ and run. Like yeah. you don't have to worry about being weighed down by whatever it may be. And again, not motivators, but just acknowledgement of praise God that yeah, mm-hmm. this isn't, this isn't chaining you down and weighing you down where you're having to so something completely fight it. Crazy exciting happened this, this last week. Um, uh, my kid, my youngest son, Hayes, they were doing some beginning of school stuff and they were all supposed to draw this heart on a piece of paper and cut it out. And then on the heart, they were supposed to like draw some things that meant a lot to them. Mm -hmm. Family, sports, pets, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The first thing he drew was faith in Jesus. That's That's awesome. awesome. And I was like, dang, whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, wow, that's amazing. So like there's, 
we've talked about it a few episodes ago where like I'm going to consistently have the conversation with my kids about their faith but yeah. like mm-hmm. man as a nine year old almost yeah. ten year old to like that's the first thing you put not motivated by like trying to please dad yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like for yeah that's awesome I hope that that is coming from like core somewhere yeah. core in him like Absolutely. could he actually start at this place at nine yeah mm-hmm. wow like that'd, that'd be insane be awesome that'd be yeah. so awesome insane agreed yeah we have this mindset because of past, because of trauma, because of hurt, we have this mindset, like you said a moment ago, Micah, that look, you'll get there eventually. Yeah. It, instead of no, like this moment right now, if you if you can set your mind on the things of Jesus, like, it can happen right now. It can happen mm-hmm. now. Do you have anything else y'all want to to add, or do you want to give us a simpler view, Micah? Um, sounds like the simpler view would be renew your mind by being reminded from the scripture of who you are in Christ, Mm -hmm. not by your own works, but by his. Mm -hmm. Allowing that renewal to bring about the transformation we talked Mm -hmm. about in Romans 12. Yeah. Which is a great point. Yeah, absolutely. Those things flow from one another or one flows from the other. It's a better way of saying it. Absolutely. That's awesome. I've really enjoyed this episode. I, uh, let us know, find us on social media. Let us know what you, let us know your thoughts. Um, we we know and we see in conversations like this that as you're discussing you and applying, you realize like, oh, well, what about how do we apply it to this mode of life? Just like we, we, we got into parenting for a little bit. So how do we apply this type <laughs> of teaching, this type of understanding? And so if you've guys thought of different topics or different things that we could branch off on from this, let us know on social media at SimplerPod, Instagram or Facebook. Um, go give us a follow over there, but also message us over there. Let us know topics we can discuss in the future. Let us know, uh, how you're, how you're doing, how you're growing, how you are involved in these conversations. If these have branched into conversations in your daily life as well. And Hey, while you're over there on social media, go ahead and find Steven, his new, so he's not no longer at the garden audio. They have ventured into a, we obviously still have the studio, but right. on social media, they ventured into a new, uh, him and his wife are now a real estate team in our local area called 87 realty group. And so sneak your way over there and say, Hey man, I know you're selling houses now, but love what you're doing on simpler pod. Thank you so much. Uh, and we can't thank Steven enough for being able to come out here, have a place that we can you just know it's funny. Uh, he's doing this now and I'll probably, it'll, this will be the fall since I'm not doing any projects for anybody in your mm-hmm. email project. Where I'll probably start writing songs again. Yeah, and be like Steven, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta go to the studio. studio. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta make it happen, man. Uh, but anyway, yeah, tell them thank you. And uh, and yeah, we wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, go ahead, hit subscribe, hit follow, leave a comment, whatever, boost the algorithm, uh, so we can see the simpler community grow. It's been amazing. It's been awesome. We're so thankful for you guys. And as always, keep Christ as core. What could be simpler than that? Catch y'all next week. Bye.